Welcome to Classic Valley Investors and Microcap Explosions. This is Marius Skonieczny. This video is a little bit different because we are not talking about just a mining company. We are talking about a drilling company that helps mining companies destroy value for its shareholders. Energold Drilling. There's a viewpoint out there that, which is true, that most of the mining companies, especially the juniors, uh, will be unsuccessful. 90% of them will fail, and that has been exactly my experience. But when it comes to drilling, most of the drilling is going is wasteful, and it doesn't find new deposits. That's not something that you can argue about. That's a fact. Consequently, there is uh, this philosophy out there that you can make money from mining trends by investing in companies that are selling the picks and shovels to the mining industry. And this includes the drilling companies. So they, you know, sell them the services. One way to look at it, Gina, is where the shovels and picks. So when the San Francisco gold rush happened in the 40s, obviously the guys that found the big nuggets had the huge wins. You know, they went from nothing to millionaires back then. Yeah. But the guys that made the steady wins were the guys like Levi Jeans. Exactly. And the guys that own and showed literally the shovels and picks yep. to help everyone find the gold. Excellent. So we're kind of like that analogy, if you will. And this was the story of Energold drilling. And actually, I first heard about it, this company, from Kapi, uh, Adventures in Capitalism. As you can see here, he wrote about um, mining services part in February of 2020. And by the way, this is not in any way a criticism on Kapi. I am just stating a fact where I got the idea from. And because this was a sound uh, investment this was a sound company and i was fooled the same way other people were fooled but anyway what you see here is that he was explaining this company and this is uh, uh right here Energold uh canada so anyway without any further delay let's get on with some videos to show you the introduction to the company Energold Drilling is one of the largest integrated global drilling companies in the world. Utilizing its specialty S-Style rig, it boasts over 240 rig platforms working in 22 countries across the fields of mining, energy, and water. Starting 12 years ago with just one rig, Energold decided to change the image that mining is a destructive force towards the environment with a small yet efficient rig that is less than 4 by 4 meters when set up. This was a very unique company because it was started from nothing by the CEO and it had those portable rigs. You see regular rigs, they are mounted on a truck. And so in order for the, uh, for the drilling to happen, you have to build roads and then you have to drive the truck through it and then, uh, and then do the drilling. You see, this company was unique because it has those portable drills that could be uh, carried by by a few people and then they could be assembled on site. So, yeah, so mining companies could drill in areas where they don't have any access to. I'm Fred Davidson. I'm president and chief executive officer of Energold Drilling Corp. Energold Drilling employs over 2,500 people in almost 24 countries throughout the world today. Energold's highly mobile surface rigs are the premier diamond drilling rigs servicing the international mining sector. As its heaviest component weighs only 420 pounds, the rig is easily transportable up difficult and extreme terrain, saving costs on logistics and accessing areas previously impossible with conventional rigs. So back then, 2010-2011, when the price of gold was hot, uh, everybody was hopped on the sector because the governments around the world were printing money. Gold was only going to go up. Consequently, there was a lot of drilling activity. And Energold was making a tremendous amount of money uh, from these rigs. They were making like $140 million per year from uh, drilling. And the market cap, I believe, was about $600 million. 
Uh, we average about a million dollar per rig per year. So wow. we were doing 120 million in mining alone. Wow. In 2012, the Energo Group totaled over 142 million dollars in revenue, with over 80 million dollars coming from minerals and the rest from a diversified source of manufacturing and energy. With over 91 million dollars in working capital, 28 million dollars in cash, and very low debt, Energo Group is very well positioned for continuous growth. Because the uh, mineral drilling is a cyclical industry over time the company diversified into other areas such as energy drilling water drilling and it also bought a company that was making rigs and that was to diversify its revenue stream and to make it more stable we have 270 rigs spread out a mix of mining oil and gas and also geotechnical and water rigs we actually grow in california one of the biggest drillers in mexico and in various parts of africa and asia interesting and how long has the company been in business been, been in business since the late 90s yeah i mean drilling is 20 years that's right it's not a short-term business and then something unthinkable happened the price of gold went down and even though everybody in 2011 was bullish on the price of gold. You have everybody being bullish on the price of gold, just like they are bullish on the price of gold today. And the pro But it was no problem. The price of gold went down. It was no problem from, for Energold because it was going to survive. So what are your plans for 2018? For sure. Well, I mean, we had a rough last five years, no mm -hmm. doubt. I mean, mining hasn't been the greatest, but fortunately, our team had a good insight and foresight in 2012. We we had a big financing in 2012 at a much higher level that enabled us to diversify away from just mining. What are the survival skills that are necessary, uh, both at a corporate level and then, and then at an executive level, Frederick, where you you have to have some kind of clinging to hope that it will come back ah well survival skill number one is you know this is a volatile industry so you don't get extended in terms of things like debt okay? yeah. always keep a clean balance sheet working capital's tight but i think the other side was we we did have that ability to diversify our activities so a drill rig which wasn't working in minerals uh, could be working down in our energy or in our water. And, and that gave us the ability to sort of sustain ourselves through the, the really ugly downturn we had in the minerals over the last four years. As you know, the uh, market for mineral drilling, uh, certainly in the, since uh, 2012, has been suffering. You know, the last four years, according to Yahoo Finance, you see revenue, 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 you see earnings, 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 you know. Um, why can't you cut overhead? Why? And I understand that there's less drilling, but if you're doing less drilling, you're spending less on the drilling. You know, why aren't you making money? Or what can you do to be profitable? You know, will you be this year? Or talk to us about your finances. Yeah, um, good question. Very valid question, actually. Uh, as you've seen, the, the the market and our revenue has fallen off consistently. We did about 140 million dollars in revenue about six years ago. Uh, we hit the sort of bottom, if you will, in 2016 at around $65 million in revenue. GNAs are tough to bring down because we're operating in a bunch of countries that require you to have a presence there, that requires you for bureaucracy purposes to file tax returns, regulatory reporting, what have you. And I've got to admit, I've been surprised at how long it's taken for the market to even start to recover. Uh, this is the longest I've ever seen. And I think a lot of other people have said the same thing. We are in fact cutting back. And in fact, we've, uh, we're probably down to about 15 or 16 countries we're working in now, as opposed to about 24 or 25 a few years back. On the same side, we have been able to, since 2016, start getting our revenue up. And there's two functions, as, as you pointed out. Uh, one, we got to keep our GNAs down, and we're going through a second process even now, uh, cutting where it bleeds, and it's going to affect some of the issues we do. It's going to mean the quality of reporting is going to go down a bit. Uh, some of our controls are going to down a bit. By reducing the number of countries we're working in, that helps as well. Year over year, our, our growth, growth has been around 15% a year for the last two years. 
we're going to do roughly around 85 million for 2018. Uh, and 2019, even without Dando, uh, we expect we'll be doing probably the same number of dollars, uh, but improved margin uh, with lower GNAs. So we are pushing at it. It's not an easy animal to deal with. And the, the, the issue continually is uh, what projects do you take on with limited cash availability? Because working capital is tough. Revenue increased $20 million. This year, up till September at least, uh, we had a positive EBITDA. First time in about four years. And uh, we were forecasting for 2019 that if things continued, we'd be actually positive earnings. What I'm getting from you here is uh, potential shareholders shouldn't expect a, a, a turn to profit necessarily for 2018, but if things continue as you spoke with the trending, particularly your non-mineral drilling, into 2019, there's a chance that 2019 may be the year that you get back into the black. Is that a fair arm-waving guess? That's the target. It looks like this is the year that we're going to finally get back into the black. Yep. As you heard it, the company has a survival skills, they focus on a clean balance sheet because they've been around for many, many years and they know how to survive. Let's see what happens next. Now, let's say, you know, the, the happy question, right? Let's say the, the resource sector really turns around this year. Let's say gold breaks above 1400. Everybody's excited, you know. Uh, marijuana was yesterday and it's gold this year and everybody comes rushing back. Can you respond to that? If You know, this is really a sad story because you have a guy that starts the company from nothing, okay? He starts it in the mineral drilling. Then he diversif diversifies it into energy drilling, water drilling. Then he buys the uh, rig making company and he turns it around, okay? He survives all the cycles. The market cap of, it, of the company reaches six, $600 million. And then it goes into the downturn. He doesn't reduce the SGNA. And then he takes on $20 million of debt. $20 million of debt in comparison to a $600 million market cap that it was before. And that $20 million bankrupted the company. I mean, just let that sink in. 240 rigs in 24 countries. One rig was generating a million dollars at the peak, okay? It was, the company was making almost $150 million in revenues. It was on the way to recovery. The gold was about to turn. And now everybody loves gold and thinks it's going to 5,000. And they literally miss it by a few months because of a $20 million lender. So that's the wonderful world of mining. So it's not just the miners that mess up because of taking on a lot or a little bit of debt when the shareholders don't want to get it uh, diluted it's even guys like this that provide services. And I understand if this company was swimming in debt to finance the rigs. They barely, barely had any debt. And that little debt killed them. That's it. Thanks for watching.